Hello. So I uh, saw a psychiatrist and a counselor and uh, a doctor in the last couple of days, and I was advised to keep a journal. And I thought, why not film it? Because I film everything else. So um, here's that, and hopefully I'll keep it short and to the point. One of the things that became like really apparent um, after uh, going to this last visit, I, I just like went through all of the different things, like trying to catch up, like, so where am I sitting right now in like my psyche and just in my life. And so I, I went through my journal and just was like, oh God, so all this happened in the last four months started off about four months ago I ended up still having been diagnosed as chronic depression at that time had been on twice the amount of meds that I should have been I, I don't know if it was because of that but it was right after that I started having uh, a series of nervous breakdowns in late February I ended up having the worst day of my life which if you're sensitive to you know people talking about traumatic stuff or just like medical stuff this might be a good time to you know, watch something more cheerful. I don't know. But yeah, essentially I was, for me, it felt like two hours. It may not have been that long, but I was just like screaming, thrashing, like full body pain, just to the point where like lost com complete control of my body and was just thrashing on the floor of the bathroom and just hoping like internally, just wishing that it would end and, uh, and just like, having no control over the situation whatsoever. Um, so that was, that, that was awful. Um, <clears throat> and at that point I started the Becoming Laura album just as a way to cope with the flood of weird bodily sensations and, you know, mental ideations and all the stuff that I was going through at the time. So it was like, well, let me at least like try and take some of that energy and, and, do something with it. So that's why I made that album. Um, and then right after that, I got diagnosed as being bipolar. Ended up leaving my last uh, living arrangement, moving back in with my folks because of uh, the nervous breakdowns and how that affected myself and everyone else in that living arrangement. More nervous breakdowns, started a whole new series of meds, uh, was hospitalized in inpatient mental health for eight days. Uh, and then I got out and recorded and released Side B and Giant Step Gently. And that all happened in the last four months. And it wasn't until I was in counseling the other day where it would, it was kind of repeated back to me that I was like, oh crap, <laughs> that, that's a lot of stuff. Like, you know, um, and I, and I, I don't want to like say like I'm the queen of suffering or whatever. Like, you know, there's a lot of people that go through like so many different situations and you know i'm not trying to say that my pain is more or less than anyone else it's just like for me like that was a really heavy four months and at this point i am just like cool i, I want to take a breather um and so I, I guess coming out of that at the the tail end of that four months making giants uh step gently i posted so much stuff on instagram that coincided with the writing, recording, and release of that album. I guess if anyone's got any questions on that, I, I, I posted so much, I feel like all the information's out there, but if you have questions, any further questions, just let me know. Um, but because of that, I, I went out of there just like kind of, at that point, I was like, okay, Laura CK, like I am Laura CK, but Laura CK is also like a project. I guess, like, not, not saying that, like, Laura C.K. is a separate person, but, like, there's a, I don't know, I, I feel like I'm more free with what I would otherwise allow myself to say when I'm doing a Laura C.K. project as opposed to just, like, posting on my Facebook or something, and that that's, like, whatever. It's because I was raised Mormon. <laughs> it's just a lot of, like, old baggage that I've been working through. But, um, that being said... I started, or I intended kind of halfway, I was like, let me just label everything explicit, because, like, Laura CK, like, I'm going to be talking about sex, I'm going to be, like, doing whatever, and I posted some stuff on, on Instagram where, like, I showed my butt, and I showed a nipple, and it's like, whatever, I'm not ashamed of my body, and at the same time, I also want to make it totally clear that for me, 
any sort of adult explicit material is for adults. Like that I put out, I'm intending it for adults. You know, I, I did a bunch of stupid shit over the last four months. Like I'm not gonna like fudge that or like whatever. I did a bunch of stupid shit. Part of that, I was just like really realized that like how important consent is and like how easy it is to go across that line. Um, and so I realized it was either yesterday or the day before, like I realized one of my Instagram followers uh, was a high school kid. I was just like, ah, like nothing against high school kids, but it was like, I can't be putting out explicit material on my Instagram account if I've got high schoolers following me. So I don't know if any of y'all were expecting that, but it's not coming. So there's that. Also looking back at like the three different releases, like you can definitely tell, like granted there was like, I think I made Becoming Lore CK in two weeks, but those songs had been written for like seven, ten years ago or whatever. Like there were songs that I had known forever. Side B, those were songs from like four to six years ago. And Giant Step Gently got written like as pretty much as it got put out. But you definitely, like that being said, with the, the writing, you definitely notice a deterioration in the quality of performance as the albums go on. And part of that is due to like the shortened recording spans. Like I spent less time recording each EP as I went through. And like just I'm getting more and more burnt out. So by the time I got finished with uh, Giant Step Gently, I was I was preparing to do an acoustic cover of a hard, hardcore song. But I was going to do... Um, uh, Outcast Stomp by Gloss. I was like, that would be cool, because, like, with, um, with Seraphim, that was my idea of just, like, loving hardcore when I was in my 20s, and then just, like, well, what if you did a hardcore acoustic song? You know, what would that sound like? So Seraphim was, like, kind of my take on that. And then I was like, well, what if I took an established one, and then I, I did a tribute? Uh, so I was planning on doing the Gloss song, and, like, I swear, like, I couldn't get through it because every time, just, like, what my body did, it reacted so strongly that I would just, like, start crying and be unable to play. Um, so that was a pretty big sign to me that, like, I needed to take a step back and take a breather. Um, so I know um, Max and I made the announcement, uh, I think, last week. I can't keep track of this now. Um about that we were doing David Bowie Book Club. And that's gonna be a thing, that'll happen. Um, but don't hold your breath. <laughs> like, it'll happen when it happens. And I wanna make sure that at least my playing on it is better than the last few things that I released and recorded. So, it, um, during that cycle, I, I had written a thing, it was like, um, process over product, you know? Cause, it, it's like, I, I don't remember who said it, but it's like such a common sentiment. It's like, if you're not doing it for fun, if you're not having fun while you're doing it, why the hell are you doing it? Um, and like, I had fun the entire time, right up, well, for <laughs> for most of it, up until Giant Step Gently, and then it like got really not fun really quick. So I, I want it to be fun again. And I think, you know, now that summer's right around the corner, like, is a lot of, a lot of good, uh, good energy and I think uh, there's gonna be more fun stuff coming your way soon all right thanks for listening if you watch this <laughs> and I hope you're all having a wonderful time and I will see you all later